Everyone needs compassion Love is never failing Have mercy for me Everyone needs forgiveness Kindness of the Savior The hope of nations Well, good morning and welcome to our service of the word on this um, Sunday the 19th of July. Um, I've made a few changes so hopefully it'll run a little bit smoother. I won't be bobbing up and down. Um, I've got um, a computer here and hopefully can manage to make the tr transitions that little bit easier for you as we move forward. Um, I just need to think about what I'm doing next. There we are. Uh, notices. Um, I don't think I've got any major notices to, to say. For those of you that are on the notice sheet, you'll have seen um, those notices and there's nothing new to add. If you're not on the notice sheet, you can request to have those um, things sent to you um, by email, um, by emailing the church's email address, which appears on the last screen of today's service. Let's spend a moment of silence as we recognize that we are in God's presence, no matter where we are. Grace, mercy, and peace 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. And we um, say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We seek to worthily magnify his holy name in all of our lives, but we fail. And so we now come to our time of confession where we can put those failures before him and seek his forgiveness. It's a responsorial um, confession. And so when I get to the part where I say, Father, forgive us, we'll all say together, save us and help us. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. And the Lord enriches with his grace and nourishes with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And the collect set aside for this Sunday, as I often say, has already been played by thousands of Christians across the world. And we join our voices with them. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
our reading for today. It's taken from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and 36 to 43. And this is taken from the Good News Bible. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night, when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the heads of grain began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servant came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? They asked him. No, he answered because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first, tie them in bundles and burn them, and then to gather in the wheat and put it into my barn. When Jesus had left the crowd and gone indoors, his disciples came to him and said, tell us what the parable about the weeds in the field means. Jesus answered, the man who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the people who belong to the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. And the enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvest workers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so the same thing will happen at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels to gather up out of his kingdom all those who cause people to sin and all others who do evil things. And they will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will cry and gnash their teeth. Then God's people will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Listen then, if you have ears. Let us pray. Father, give us ears to hear your words as I speak. Amen. Another parable, another farming parable. Um, last week we had a farmer spreading seeds on different types of soil. And this night we have a farmer who sells, spreads good seed on a farm and then the enemy plants weeds. Some quite startling imagery in this reading, particularly at the end when we're looking at the fire, that fiery furnace. And in the Middle Ages, lots of art took that picture. It became a theme. And it's very easy for us to fall into one of two camps. The first one is the fire and damnation camp that concentrates solely on that picture and sends out a message that people need to be saved or they'll burn in hell. And there's other people who want to focus on the grace, who believe that God will wait for that harvest, as he said in the until all the weeds have been changed into corn or wheat. This. Those two extremes opinions are not the full story. 
we have to remember the fire. Because it's that that will give us the urgency, the desire to tell those we love about the God we love and about how they too can receive the blessings that we have received. But we have to be careful as we do that, that we follow the example of the God of grace. See in those first chapters, first verses, where the servants ask him, do you want us to go in and pull up all the weeds? The answer was no, because of the damage that might be done to those young seedlings of good wheat that was growing. And I've had experiences where I've seen young Christians turned away from God because they say of him as a harsh God, not a gracious God, because those around him continued to, bu to push fire and hell and damnation and not balance it with the grace of God. For it's grace that's brought us here. It's the, by the compassion of God that we are in his presence that we will be in his presence for eternity. He has done everything for us. So we have to be careful that we don't, with all in good intentions, turn into people who turn people away from God, because we draw a non truthful picture of a God angry, seeking to destroy. But rather, we show that God is a God of grace, a God of love who longs for them to come to him and be his children. That he is a God father who will care for them and bless them. But he is a just God. And there will come a time when he returns and Jesus will be set as judge. And those who have rejected him, he will reject. So I encourage you to live life of grace, but never forget the urgency, the need of those around you to hear the gospel of God and to come to know that loving God as their saviour. We are going to move on now to our creed, which is a responsible, responsive creed. Um, and um, I'll be asking questions and then um, as I get to the end of each of the three questions about Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we state together that we believe and trust in him.
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one to whom, for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our time of prayer now. And there's a response to this that I've not actually put prepared and put on the screen. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it's this. When I say God of mercy, if you could respond with, hear us as we pray. That's God of mercy. Hear us as we pray. God's justice is always blended with mercy and loving kindness so that we have real hope. Let us draw near to the just and merciful God and pour out our concerns for the church and for the world. Lord our God, as we join the unending cycle of prayer on our planet, turning through time and space, we rejoice in your upholding, your mercy and forgiveness in all our small-mindedness, we ask your inbreathing, so that we learn to look with your vision and act with your wideness of compassion. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Lord our God, be present at all meetings and negotiations where feelings run high and many lives are profoundly affected by the decisions made. We pray for real communication which listens to needs and appreciates difficulties so that we may live on this earth together in harmony and peace. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Lord our God, we pray for this neighbourhood and the particular problems it has. For those communities split apart by conflict or crossed by tragedy. We pray for those involved with court proceedings. May our judicial system uphold your principle of justice with mercy. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Lord our God, we pray for those who have a raw deal in this life. For those with ongoing health problems and all who are caught up in war and deprivation or are subject to prejudice. We pray for a just and realistic sharing of our resources and courage, support and healing for all who suffer. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Lord our God, 
We pray for those who have died and now see their lives as they really are. We pray for your mercy on them. And thank you for all their acts of goodness and love. God of mercy, hear us as we pray. Lord our God, in all the events and phases of our life, we give you thanks for your steadfast and unchanging love, which sustains and directs us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm um, going to go on to our um, diocesan prayer and the Lord's Prayer. And I apologise, I haven't put them where you can be, where I can show them on the screen easily. Um, a diocesan prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we coming towards the end of our service. So the blessing. May God give to you and all those you love his comfort and his peace his light and his joy in this world and the next and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Goodbye and thank you for tuning in and um, I hope to get even better at this so you, you get the words on when they should be as we move on. But as always, I long for that time and look forward to it where we can meet together, sing God praises together and share the peace with each other. God bless you. Stay safe.